Good morning, Cardinals. Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hope and pray you had a blessed evening. Continued gratitude and thanks, Cardinals, for the gift of you, for the gift of our amazing teachers and staff, and for the incredible gift of our parents and family and community members um, who support our school. So thank you so much, Cardinals, and, and thank you for all your efforts in, in making this place such a home away from home and making sure that we walk in God's grace, being acting as, as good stewards of God's creation. Amen. So thank you again. Just uh, hadn't really made that much of a, taking that much time to just extend my gratitude and this thanksgiving for the gift of you and all that you do for our school and for our community. So keep up the great work, Cardinals. Uh, please remember, Cardinals, that this week ends the second trimester. So heads up, any effort or opportunity to make up quizzes, tests, turn in missing assignments, uh, working with your teachers to see what you can do to end up with the grade that you hope to have achieved in the second trimester is coming up very, very quick. And then with that being said, Cardinals, just know that uh, parent-teacher conferences are scheduled for next week as well. And the hope is, is that your parents can look at a report card that hopefully they are pleased with and that you are also pleased with. Um, and so that way it can be a great conversation uh, during the parent-teacher conferences. So um, please keep up the great work, Cardinals. And as we eventually end up at a point where we begin the third trimester, it's always good to set those goals and those hopes and those plans in place in order to finish the school year strong for the third trimester, okay? If everyone could please take a moment now to breathe in the Holy Spirit. Put on their Christ and listen to today's word. Today's reading begins with Jesus healing his disciple Simon's mother-in-law. In today's world, we understand that many people suffer from mental illness or brain disease. In Jesus' day, people believe these ailments to be brought on by demons. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. After leaving the synagogue, he entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him about her. Then he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately she got up and began to serve them. As the sun was setting, all people who were, who had any, all people who had any who were sick with various kinds of diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on each of them and cured them. Demons also came out of many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, as we continue on this journey of faith, coming to acknowledge uh, the amazing man, example, testimony of, of Jesus and who he was, how much he loved his father, uh, how much he loved God's people, how much he was there to serve God's people is in full display here by healing people. And brothers and sisters, imagine for a moment that Jesus tells his disciples and you and I, because we are disciples as well, that's one of our callings, is that we will be able to do greater things than he. Imagine that. We can also help heal people. Now, brothers and sisters, you know, I, I don't know that I've experienced people who have laid hands and people just to be healed automatically. I don't I've never witnessed anybody who's uh, spoken to something and a demon comes out of a person or anything of that kind. But brothers and sisters, I have witnessed lots of other types of healing over the course of my life by people praying for them and for by people laying hands on them and by people just um, wanting the best for their for their for their loved ones, for their friends, and for even perfect strangers. And so brothers and sisters, you have the power to heal. Imagine, you have the power to extend mercy, forgiveness. That is a healing process. Many a times when, when we've hurt others, it weighs on us, right? It, it bothers us to know that we've hurt another person. And when we take the time to extend mercy, forgiveness, and when that person comes to us and asks for forgiveness and we extend them that mercy and that forgiveness, just like Jesus does for you and I, healing takes place. When we have the opportunity, brothers and sisters, to share a laugh, laughter is what they say is sometimes the best medicine. That is a healing that takes place. When people know that you are praying for them, that hope 
that you give them causes healing mentally, spiritually, emotionally, even physically, brothers and sisters. And so I don't know, I, I can, in hundreds, if not thousands of instances in my life that I've had the pleasure and honor of experiencing where people know they've been healed as a result of others praying for them, as a result of people forgiving them, as a result of reconciling with people, uh, coming back together in union with, with family members. I've witnessed it my whole life, my whole life being healed. And personally for me too, I was a broken person in my younger days. I was a person that was uh, struggling with a lot of different um, circumstances in life. Uh, life was a little bit uh, challenging in my younger years. And in the meantime, reaching out to Christ was the best thing that I have ever done in my life. One of the best, if not the best decision. Oh, let me just put it out there. It was the best decision I've ever made in my life, which was to give my, my life to Christ. And in doing so, so much healing took place. And so what you see in front of you today is a man that, uh, who was very broken, who was very ill spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, being healed from the inside out um, over the course of many years, over the course of many instances because of God, God's power and prayer, God placing people in my life that helped to heal me, um, by the unconditional love I received by my family, the support I received from my community, my church. Um, brothers and sisters, I can go on and on, but I know there is power in prayer. I know that people have been placed in my life to help me heal over the course of my life and continue to do so each and every single day. And I can tell you, brothers and sisters, one of the best examples I can give you currently today as being a member of this amazing community is there are days where Mr. Horton is, is struggling and without fail and through prayer, my Cardinals always come through. My Cardinals always come through with a good morning, Mr. Horton and a smile. My Cardinals always come through with a uh, real quick side hug to say, have a good day, Mr. Horton. My Cardinals always come through by knowing that, that I know that they're praying for me, right? And so Cardinals, I just wanna say thank you for healing me in times where I need a little bit of healing. Thank you for being the light of Christ for me. Thank you for being such an amazing gift, a child of God, a disciple of Christ, even when you probably don't even realize it. And so these are all the things that my spiritual eyes see, take in. These are all the miracles that I see taking place at our school each and every single day. And I am just so honored and grateful to be part of it. So the hope and prayer is on your spiritual journey that your eyes are open to begin to see how God is very much at work, how Christ is very much at work, and how the Spirit is very much at work here at St. Charles School, and, and, and how God is moving and healing and, and working in so many lives, in each and every single one of our lives. And, you know, some of us don't realize it, but those of us who do, what an amazing thing to observe and to see taking place. And the prayer for all of us, brothers and sisters, is that our spiritual eyes will be open to see this event taking place all the time. And so thank you again, Cardinals, and thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you to the Spirit for, for their, their place here at St. Charles, moving amongst these walls and these halls and, and in the lives of one another, so that way we can love with abundance, heal one another, and to continue to be the light of Christ. Thank you so much, Cardinals. I hope and pray you have a wonderful day. God bless. If you could please take a moment now to stand and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. God bless America and God bless our world. Hope and pray you have a blessed day. God bless. A person of the gospel values, prays daily, knows and understands our faith, demonstrates the spirit of service. A lifelong learner, thinks critically, develops skills and knowledge, and participates in the arts. A good person of moral character accepts accountability for their actions, respects school, peers, and adults, and acts as a good steward of the earth. Oh, look at that.
Hello. 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 Hello.